Tonight on My House, My Castle, what happens when you move into a new place but the old owner never really moved out? She's not heavy. I think she feels sort of misplaced. Almost like a feeling of invasion. Why are you coming to my house? Why are you doing all this? Why are you disturbing me? Does evil lurk behind doors and the dark shadows and memories of your home? We're just really confused what was going on in this house. We bring you Jane Brebner, the real deal when it comes to psychics. Skepticism is good, it's healthy. Uh, there are some things though that cannot be explained. And sharing your home with spirits. Do you see balls or orbs floating around? That's tonight as we delve into the supernatural. <laughs> What do we do when dark forces and strange happenings occur in the most ordinary of places, your home? And what happens if you find out that some of the previous occupants of your house never actually left? Meet Dan, Courtney, Brendan and Steve. They live in this lovely old bungalow, just the four of them, or so they thought. It's probably the third house we looked at. And this seemed to be the best one so far, right? Yeah, walked in and just fell in love with it and said yes straight mm. away. The rent was less than $400 a week, which was really cheap for the area, but they didn't ask why. Instead, they moved in right away and got on with the business of flatting. You know, the usual squabbles over cleaning the toilet and paying the bills. But right from the start, something was making them tense and nervous, and it had nothing to do with a lack of money in the kitty. There's one room in the house that just has a, you know, really strange energy. Anytime you walk in that room, no. you just get a chill. But that wasn't all that was bothering the flatmates. I'm not a great cook, so I turned the oven up really high. But as she chopped vegetables, Courtney sensed she wasn't alone. And she was right. All of a sudden, it turned around and it had been turned down 100 degrees. And so I turned it back up again and came back again and it had been turned down again. Courtney was creeped out and tried to blame her flatmate. Steve, what did you turn the oven down for? I didn't touch the oven. I wouldn't dream of interfering with your cooking. <laughs> but deep down, she knew there was something weird going on. Meanwhile, Brendan had his own creepy kitchen experience. I needed to cook some toast. So um, I put it into the oven and kind of forgot about it. Hello? Not a problem. I was home alone. Yeah, not too bad. Nah, it's been a great day. And the whole house was full of smoke. As smoke poured from the burning toast, Brendan rushed to open a window. I turned around and the window was completely open. Someone had got there before him. Who had been shut. The fixture on the window is actually a clip. We have to clip it and push open and close. So it's not an easy window at all to open. The flatmates were left with an uneasy feeling. What if someone or something was in the house? What if something bad had happened? Or was it all just a coincidence? They had a bit of a nervous laugh about it, and the boys just got on with their lives, but Courtney wasn't so sure. Courtney still felt uneasy, but things really came to a head for her when her favourite skull ornament became involved. We had a few people over when we first moved in, and the skull was in between the two couches, and basically I woke up in the morning and found it above my wardrobe, and I thought, oh, that was strange, maybe somebody moved it up there. And then um, a couple of days later, I came home and the skull had been flipped upside down and the eyes were just, like, directly towards the door. It was very creepy, and that's yeah. when I started to get really creeped out. It did get a bit stressful at one stage. We're just really confused what was going on in this house. Is there something angry at us or we're doing something wrong? 
Despite being clean freaks and paying the rent on time, they were obviously pissing off someone big time. We started to do um, some investigating around just to see what's going on and um, we walked around the, under, there's a little basement we have under this house and it's full of old furniture and we, we think it's at, from a previous owner. Scoring a cheap flat with its own angry spirit didn't seem like such a laugh after all. The flatmates hated being home and found themselves spending more time at the local pub hoping a drink would calm their frazzled nerves. Yeah, there has been a couple of more events. Um, things have been feeling a bit more stronger. For me, I've, I've felt a bit more, um, bit more afraid. Energy, yeah. yeah, lots more energy in the house, definitely. Not fun energy either, it's no, not nice anymore. It's negative, a lot of negative energy. But who, or what, could it be? Coming up, we call in Jane Brepner, suburban psychic. Certainly, the energy is a lot more intense and a lot more dense. Do the flatmates have overactive imaginations? It just becomes very uneasy, especially if you're at home alone and it's night time. Or is evil present in the house? Also, I noticed the difference as I move towards the bathroom here. And our guide to sharing your home with spirits. You're dead. You've got to move on. <laughs> Don't be afraid. You're supposed to be the scary ones. <laughs>